sun shields on 360 strobe beacons. Should they have been standard equipment or are they just a silly gimmick to mess with your strobe beacon? Let's take a look. Recently the topic of sun shades for strobe beacons came up and they were definitely an option, however probably an underutilized one. Um, different manufacturers did them different ways. Um, Whalen generally did them as a blackout on top of the dome. Uh, other companies would do them as a silver sort of sticker on top of the dome, or actually this was supposed to go in the dome on the electric lights, but no one was able to get them in there generally. Um, Whalen also used this on the 8000 series light bar as an option. It helped quite a bit with 360 strobes, and as you'll see in a moment, uh, the Super Strobe 360 actually has a built-in one now. Um, so it was certainly a thing. Um, how much does it help? I think it's a, a, a big deal, but let's see. Let's see if we can test this. Um, I'm going to utilize a flashlight, which is definitely not as bright as the sun, although seeing how it kind of got owned by the moon yesterday... Now I'm starting to wonder, but seriously, it's, uh, we're just going to see if this helps at all. So the small black one, uh, doesn't cover the whole top of the dome. And that's probably by design because the way the wheel and dome kind of tapers off. Um, in person, it seems to be helping a little bit. Here's the same light without it. It seems pretty well washed out whereas this one seems to be retaining its uh, brightness to some extent, although I think the lack of covering the outside here did hurt, does hurt it. Um, and here, this beacon's dimmer overall, but I think it suffers less because the entire top of the dome has been blocked out. Um, now this is, of course, just a straight down beam of light. What happens when we have a setting sun or a rising sun? Well, there's not a whole lot of protecting against that because you're getting light into the optics that are supposed to be providing the the uh, strobe light so it's not really helpful but uh, just from a complete standpoint of does it help yeah sure it helps how much does it help uh, varying degrees based on size so for the 1200 800 that series they were made uh, they weren't necessarily the whole dome but they were made and i think they were better than nothing i certainly would have specified them if i was ordering such a light The early Super Strobe, back when they were a metal base with a uh, removable bulb, had an internal diffuser as well as the external fluting, but there was no internal diffuser or sunshade like there is now. Uh, there were optional uh, sunshades for the exterior, which covered the entire top of the dome and were quite effective, but they were not built in at that point. So together, these on a DOT power supply, so they flash simultaneously. We've got an example with a sunshade and an example without. The sunshade on the 360 makes quite a bit of difference in my opinion. Um, and I believe they were coming with every beacon uh, up until the internal one was offered. You see them pretty frequently. They took a lot of damage from the sun usually, but I do like how they cover the whole dome. And I think that was really the way to go. Uh, the 360 was so vulnerable to sun just because the internal spreader goes straight down and the external is curved. Um, you could really get a lot of sort of uh, flashback illumination, especially since the top uh, would be otherwise completely clear uh, you could have a lot of problems with sun. So I think the Super Strobe 360 really kind of took care of the problem just in intrinsically. But uh, as you'll see in a moment, uh, later they solved it in an even, even more built-in way. So this is the early way of solving it here. The other blackout option on the Super Strobe before the internal... Um, sunshade was to actually black out as much of the dome as you wanted and this was popular on california mounts or corner of the box mounts for dump trucks so this would prevent the lamp from flashing into the driver's eyes 
And depending on where it was mounted, this might orient in different ways, but it was not just a sunshade, it was also a uh, side blackout. These are pretty effective, um, as you can see, and I've talked about before, there's a huge variation in the colors of amber and yellow that Whelan produced. This is a much more amber dome. Uh, this one's a little bit more yellow, but these are the same series of light. One with no sun shield whatsoever, and one with the factory blackout of the back and top. So that option worked very well as a sunshade as well. Um, but it served another purpose. So these two, very similar on the interior, but uh, obviously a big difference up on the top there. After Whalen switched to the internal sunshade, they also switched to a flash tube that was mounted in the middle of a similar or the same actually piece of plastic and protruded up, making a sandwich of sunshades, essentially, with the bulb in the middle. So this made the flash tube appear much more uh, concentrated out the sides they wanted it to, but it also served as a sunshade. These two beacons are identical. However, one of them has had the sunshade removed, and let's see if there's any noticeable difference. Can you guess which one the sunshade was removed on? That's right, it's this one. So, the sunshade was more than just a sunshade. Like I said, it formed a sandwich around the diffuser and bulb, which was mounted on the same sort of device. We can take a look at that. So let's have a look under the dome here. Here is our all-in-one, very similar flash tube to the sunshade. They're not 100% identical, but they're cut from the same cloth, if you will. Um, so this actually sandwiches the bulb with the diffuser. So when we place our diffuser here and our sunshade here, we've really made a a bulb sandwich between two reflective cones. Um, and that has been a very effective design. Just from a standpoint of being a sunshade, but also from the uh, obvious op op optical ben benefits that it would uh, provide. So we can have a look here at uh, putting this back together. There, There is a right way to do this. It does orient uh, into the dome and onto the base. Um, which can be a little bit challenging to put back together sometimes, but these are actually synchronized as well. This uh, version of the Super Strobe offered the ability to uh, synchronize two beacons together. So these are not on a remote supply. These each have their own internal supply and they're synchronized together, which is uh, something Whalen attempted early and then kind of gave up on there really wasn't a huge need for it because people would just use a remote supply. But in this particular market, which is the, I just want two beacons and I want them to be synchronized market, usually a dump truck, um, not running a strobe supply made a lot of sense. So they came back to this uh, in the later 360 models uh, and they did end up allowing a synchronization feature. So what does our beacon look like with our sunshade? Without. Quite a bit of difference, really a good design choice, both from a output standpoint uh, and from a sunshade standpoint. I think this could have been extremely successful in other beacons, but by the time this came out, the era of the strobe beacon was on its way out and designing LED reflectors um, kind of replaced the idea of needing a sunshade. Although there are some LED beacon designs that would do well to have a sunshade, and I believe they still do offer the black circle on the top of the dome of some of their LED beacons. Um, I could be wrong, but they did at one point. So 
the, the super strobe or the uh, 360 really took the idea of the sun shield and took it one step further and made it into a uh, piece of the optics, which I think really contributed to this beacon lasting uh, as long as it did in the, uh, in the lineup, even for being a strobe beacon. But overall, I like this design. Um, I think it served them very, very well. And I think it kept the uh, super strobe on the market uh, long after uh, what might have otherwise, otherwise been its demise. So internal sun shield acting as a part of the reflector design, pretty much the um, pretty much the pinnacle of sun shades, if you will. So if, if you want to talk sun shades, the Super Strobe 360 took an idea that was a sticker on top of the dome, like every other strobe, and turned it into optics inside. So what do you guys think? Should these have been standard equipment on every single strobe beacon? They kind of were on the Super Strobe after it became part of the design, and they kind of were on the Super Strobe when they included the sticker as standard uh, kind of equipment. But should this have just been a thing on every strobe beacon? Why wasn't it? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Thanks for watching.